Let it spine nice and tall. Good, exhaling completely. Inhale, slow, 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 pause, pause. Exhale, slow, 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 slow. Complete the breath. Gently pressing the breath out, but feel the body empty and pause there. Soft, gentle, pause. Inhale, slow, 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 slow. Letting the body fill out slowly, softening to receive the breath and then pause at the top of the inhale. Right, notice how much tightness you have around the breath. Can you soften around the breath? Keep expanding around around that contained breath. Exhale, slow, 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 slow. Pressing the breath out. Again, softening here. Even though there's a pause, take the force out of it. Inhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Good, letting the breath find a rhythm. Again, if we think of the breath as a, it is a, it is a stressor, especially when we start to adapt the breath. We have a definite pattern depending on our Kind of state of mind, state of body, state of emotion. And we're almost using the breath to soothe the nervous system and its responses. Palms together in front of your heart. Just an intention or a focus for your practice today. What helps you feel kind of anchored in your being, your center, wherever that is? Good. And after your next exhale, let's inhale for one ohm. So I'm gonna use two blocks a lot today. So I'm gonna lay on my back for a moment. With my knees bent, feet flat on the floor. Good, just feeling the pelvis settle and the feet settle. And just taking a couple of breaths, trying to allow the pelvic floor to soften. Right, meaning that the breath finds the pelvic floor, which should just help all the muscles around the pelvis, within the pelvis. Right, we get to use the floor as a way to balance the pelvis. Okay. And then I'm just gonna take my one block in my hands and bring the block behind my thigh and I'm just going to hold the block with my hand. So my arms are going to be straight. I'm going to hold the block and I'm just going to press my thigh, my right thigh into the block. Again, my arms are straight. My fingers, hands are holding the block. I'm pushing into the block. And then I'm going to try to straighten that right leg, right, as I push into the block and then bend and straighten again. Good, and then point the toes and then flex the toes. Point those right toes, stretch the front of the ankle and flex, stretching the back of the knee, the back of the lower leg. One more time, point, 
and flex. So keep pressing that right thigh into the block, strongly into the block, and I'm gonna straighten that left leg, slide it out on the floor. Good, so I'm reaching strongly and down the length of both legs. One more breath here. And then release, bend the knees, both feet on the floor. And let's take the block to the other leg. So block behind the left leg. Good, holding the block with the fingers, palm against the block, fingers wrapped around the edge, push into the block. Good, and then let's straighten that left leg. So you'll end up pushing into the block more to straighten the leg. Right, so you'll feel your left hamstring turning on in a way as it's pushing into the block. And then bend and then straighten again. And then point, point those toes and flex. Point, just getting more into the lower leg and flex. Point, so as we stretch the lower leg, it affects the upper leg and flex. So as we reach through the heel and you feel that stretch down the back of the lower leg into the back of the knee, into the hamstring. One more time, point. You should feel it from the front of the hip to the toes. And then neutral, and let's straighten that right leg. So two straight legs and that left leg is still pressing, left thigh is still pressing into that block. Good, and then bend both knees, both feet on the floor. Okay, and then we're just gonna do it again a little more quickly. So right block on the right hamstring, straighten the right leg, straighten the left leg. Good, and then I'm gonna just take the block. So I'm gonna keep the legs there. I'm gonna take the block, release it, and bring it overhead and just hold the block in my hands, maybe a little press, and then switch the leg. So as the left leg goes up, the right leg goes down. Good. And then I'm going to, again, switch. Left leg down, right leg up, and bring the block behind the right leg again and press into the block. Good, one more time like that. Release the block, take the block overhead, hug the block with the hands, right leg goes down, left leg goes up. And then switch again. And bring that block behind the thigh again and press into the block. Good, bend the knees, both feet on the floor. Left thigh on the block. Straighten the left leg, straighten the right leg. Good, and you just can make a circle. So take the block out and overhead as you switch the legs and then bring the block back around as you bring the block behind the left leg. One more time, take the block out from behind the left leg overhead, hug the block, left leg goes down, right leg goes up and then switch the legs, block comes behind the left leg again. Good. And then bend. I know it's confusing. Right leg, left leg, arms, legs. <laughs> let's do. But let's do it one more time just for fun. <laughs> okay, so right leg on the block, right leg straight, left leg straight. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. But again, make a circle. So take, right hand takes the block, take it out to the side and overhead, switch the legs. Good. Left hand takes it behind the right thigh as, this, as you switch the leg. So now you're back on the right leg. One more time, right leg takes it overhead, switch legs, switch legs, left hand brings it back behind the right leg. Good, feet on the floor. Other side, left thigh on the block, straighten the leg, straighten the other leg. Okay, let's take left arm, takes it out from behind, switch legs. Right arm brings it back behind the left leg. Left arm takes the block out to the side, switch legs, hug the block overhead just for a moment, switch legs again, block behind the left thigh. Come on, bend your knees, both feet on the floor. 
I know, it's confusing. Right side, left side. All right, now let's come on to hands and knees. I'm gonna do blocks at the front of the mat. Right, so on the lowest height. And right, so far enough apart that you can step into plank pose, right? So hands under shoulders, spread your hands into the block, heel the hand, ball of the hand, finger pad, and step into plank. Good. From plank, I'm just going to step. So right thigh comes towards the right shoulder, right foot steps to the outside of the right hand. Right block. Good. Letting the hips sink towards the floor and towards the block. Good. Eyes look forward as the hips come forward. Just feeling that stretch in the inner legs. Drawing a couple more breaths here. And lift the hips. Step back to plank. Good, left thigh towards the left shoulder, left foot outside of that left block. Again, hips are gonna lower. So the left knee is gonna bend, the hips are gonna sink towards the blocks. The hands are still almost pressing down and pulling back towards the feet or towards that right foot. Chest forward, eyes forward as the chest moves forward. Plank pose, good. Slight posterior tilt, meaning lower belly lifted, front ribs slightly lifted. Again, first side, right foot outside of the right hand. Hips lower. Good, right foot back. Left foot forward, hips lower. Good, left foot back, plank pose. Feel what's happening in your shoulders, is the back rounding. Can you feel the shoulder blades pull towards the heels and the collarbones nice and open? Right foot outside of your hands. Good, this time the back knee is gonna come to the floor. Keep those back toes curled under and pull the feet towards each other. Good, let's take the blocks for a moment, stand them up. So they're on the highest height. And I'm just gonna walk my blocks a little closer to my pelvis. So letting the hips sink down and forward. So the sitting bone sink down. And the spine is able to lift upright. Good, maybe press feet down and away from each other just for a moment. And then find the one that gives you the most stability so that you can release your hands, right? So that you can hook your thumbs, take your arms forward and up. And you're able to pull kind of up of that vertical line. Good, hands back on blocks, blocks flat on the floor. Good, hips up, step back to plank. Again, feel the shoulder blades move down, the collarbones wide, a slight posterior tilt. Left foot forward. Back knee down. Toes are still turned under. Pull the feet towards each other just to let the hips sink forward and down even more. And you can even press the feet apart here just to feel the difference in the pelvic floor, in the inner thighs, in your stability, All right? Let's turn the blocks up, bring them closer to the pelvis. The sitting bones get heavier as the crown of the head gets lighter. And again, however you organize your feet, whether it's pulling in or pushing out, which gives you more stability up through the center line. So from the feet through the insoms of the legs to the pelvis spine, hook the thumbs, arms up. 
along through the center line. Slow the breath down. Good, hands down, blocks down. Good, lift the hips up. Come back to your plank pose. And then let's do one downward dog. Good, again, trying to get as much as the, of the palm and ball of hand, finger lengths, finger pads on the block. Plank pose again. Right foot forward, right foot outside of the block. Okay, this time I'm gonna turn that left heel in and down. So the left heel comes to the floor on that right side of the mat. So my right hand, my right foot, left foot down, left hand comes out and up. Prasvokanasana, right front knee is bent, back leg is straight. So if you can, let the belly and the breastbone turn, the eyes turn, look up. And then maybe take that left arm overhead. So you have a big arc from left hand to left foot. And left hand back to the block. So this time I'm gonna just lift that left heel, plant the left hand on the block. So now left foot, left hand are down, right arm moves out and up. Little rotation to the right. Same feeling, can you turn the belly and the breastbone and the eyes and look up at the right hand? Slow the breath down. Good, right hand down, plank pose. Left foot forward. So left foot, left hand, I'm gonna spin that right heel in and down. So the right foot is flat on the floor. The, the toes are slightly turned towards the front of the mat, the heel away. Good, right arm out and up, extended side angle. So it's an open twist, turning away from the left thigh. And belly, breastbone, eyes turn towards the right hand. And then maybe take that right arm over, right, arcing away from the right foot. Little side bend to the left. Good, right hand on the block. Lift that right heel up. So right palm down, right foot down, left arm out and up. Again, turning towards, so closed twist, turning towards the left thigh. Belly, ribs, breastbone, eyes looking up at that left hand. Good, left hand down. Just for a moment, flank. Again, feel the width in the collarbones, the length in the neck. Shoulder blades wide and down. And then hips up and back, downward dog. For a moment, lift the heels up. Try to push the hands down and forward. Push the blocks down and forward to scoop the hips up and back. And then slowly lower the heels. Okay. One more plank. Right foot outside of your hand. Okay, so this time I'm gonna take my block under my right hand and just turn it up. Middle height or top height, depends on you. Left heel turns in and down again. Same thing, the toes are turned slightly towards the front of the mat, just so that your thigh and knee can turn in towards the pelvis. And let's straighten that right leg. Again, turn the block up if you need to. Right little triangle variation. 
and then belly, breastbone, eyes up to the ceiling, left arm up. And you can even press into that right hand just to help turn the right ribs towards the floor. So the back right ribs towards the right hand, left ribs up, especially those front left ribs up towards the left hand. Long neck. Slow the breath down. Good. Bend the right knee. Well, actually, keep the right leg straight. Let's turn that other block up. Maybe turn it all the way up. So it depends on your body. It can be all the way down or all the way up or in the middle. So I'm going to plant that left hand down. Turn my belly towards the right leg. Right, so now it's a rotated triangle, close twist, right arm up. So the left hand, right, so if you look at it this way, my left hand is pretty far out to the left. And then you can even play with really letting that right hip lean out to the right, maybe even take the right arm over, right? We're just displacing that rotation a little bit. Strong legs, strong feet, and then come back to center. Hands on blocks, plank. I know it's a lot of plank. Left foot to block. Good, turning that block up under the left hand so the right foot comes in and down, right heels on the floor. Heel slightly away, toes towards. Straighten that left leg. Right, the whole torso turn. So belly, ribs, neck, head, turn towards the ceiling, right arm up. And again, so those back left ribs turn towards the floor. And as you reach into that left arm, let that help. And as the right arm reaches up, from breastbone to right hand, turns up to the ceiling. Slow the breath down. Anchor the feet, either push them away from each other or towards each other, or just into the earth. And then right hand comes down. Again, whatever height of block you need. So I'm gonna stem my right foot to the left just a little but my right foot is flat on the floor still. But if I pivot the toes a little more forward and the, little, the heel a little further back, it helps spin that right thigh forward. Belly turns to the left leg, ribs turn to the left, left arm up. Ideally, the arms reaching opposite, right? Right arm down and out from the shoulder, left arm up and out from the shoulder, or straight out from the shoulder. The reach of the arms helps turn the ribs. The turn of the ribs helps the reach of the arms. Slow the breath down. Maybe even displace it a little bit. Let that left hip lean to the left. Take the left arm over to the right side of your mat, right side of your room. Good, and then bring both hands to your block. Palms flat, walks flat. Plank pose. Good, knees down. Child's pose, just for a moment, just to stretch the under shoulder. Okay, so you can turn your blocks up, palms flat on the floor. Pulling the hips back as the hands press down and reach forward. Feel your breath almost move laterally, right to left, spreading, widening the back.
Good. And then come up onto hands and knees again. Okay. So just a couple more <laughs> um, plank things. So we're just gonna do a little series and I'll slow it down, which sometimes is a little harder, but we'll only do it once or twice, okay? And the first time will be much slower. Okay, so plank pose again. So anchor all limbs, and this is really interesting because it lets you see what, what is your dominant side. So right leg just lifts a little and down. Left leg lifts and down. Right leg, I'm just going to pick up, take over to the side, tap on the floor, bring back. Same with the left leg. Out, tap, bring back. This time I'm going to lower towards the floor, bending the arms towards a chaturanga. Lower the knees to the floor and push up or pull up, pull the ribs and the belly up to come up. Plank pose. Same thing again, right leg up and down, left leg up and down, right leg up and out to the side, tap and center, left leg out, tap and center, slowly lower down towards chaturanga, knees down, pull the belly and the ribs up, plank, downward dog. Yay, knees to the floor. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go back onto our blocks. And so I just happen to have a wall, right? Very easily accessible. So I'm gonna take two blocks, one for my upper back, one for my head. And my hands are gonna use the wall. And if that's too hard to figure out, then don't worry about the wall but I'm going to take upper back, first block, head, second block. I guess the first block needs to be an arm's length away, not the block that's under your head. Okay. Knees bent, feet flat on the floor, walking the heels close to the body. And I'm going to start with my arms overhead. So either hands are going to be on the block or they're just going to reach overhead. Good. And then I'm just going to do a little snow angel, right? Taking the arms out and down towards the hips and out and back up. Good. One more time out and down towards the hips, and then out, and back up. Good. So I wanna keep, so it's very easy to kind of push the ribs up towards the ceiling, even pushing off of the block. So see if you can let the back ribs sink into the block and the front ribs sink back into the back ribs as the arms reach overhead. And you can bring the arms up the wall if you need to. Again, you don't need to go to your edge. Think more about the arc than how deep of the back bend it is. So now I'm gonna push into my feet, push my heels down, and that sense of pulling the heels down and back just so I can send the knees forward to the toes. <clears throat> so I can almost turn on the backs of the legs first. Turn on the back of the pelvis. And then I'm going to peel the heels off the floor and keep pulling the knees across the room towards the opposite wall. So the ribs are still down. Most of the height is happening in the front of the hip. Good, and then start to lower the heels back down, keeping the hips up. I want to find that opening in the front of the hip. Front of the thigh, front of the pelvis. 
Good, and then slowly lower the hips down. Okay, so this next one, I'm gonna take the block that's under my head. I wanna keep my arms overhead, so I wanna take the block that's under my head and take it out and put it on the side. And if that's too much of a back bend, or if that's too much in your front neck, then maybe put a blanket, grab your, slide your blanket over and put it under your head just so that it's less than the block, but more than the floor. Good, and I'm just gonna take my arms out to the side, almost like a goal post, just for a moment. This is a really great stretch for the front of the neck and throat. So I'm just gonna let my head lay back on whatever it's on, the floor of the blanket, and then let my head slowly turn to the left. It's not a big stretch, but feeling a stretch on that front right neck. This is part of what pulls our head forward or when we pull our head forward it gets tight because it's holding our head forward. And then roll the head to center and then over to the other side. Head turning to the right, just letting that left front neck stretch. And then one more time to the left. Good, and one more time to the right. Slow as you can. Right, it's not always easy to let the head fall behind the heart. So do the best you can. Again, arms are gonna reach to the wall. Again, the long arc, so the ribs settle back onto the block, front ribs back onto the back ribs. If you can walk the hands easily down the wall towards the floor, great, without creating a lot of stress in the body. Again, you wanna think about a long arc from your tail to your fingertips. And then again, push into your heels, pull the heels down and back, send the knees forward past the toes. Feel the hamstrings turn on, feel the back of the hip turn on, and then lift the heels. So you can get those thighs even higher, not the ribs, but the thighs. Keep letting the knees pull away from the hands and then slowly lower the heels back down. Knees are still drawing away from the hands. Opening up the front of the hip, maybe the hands come down the wall a little bit more if they can. And then very slowly pull the buttocks towards the heels and lower the heels towards the floor. And they might not come all the way down. Or maybe the hands have to come up to bring the butt down. Long arc. Yay. Okay, now bend your arms, bring your hands behind your head. Good, lift your head up, look at your belly button, bring your head all the way up, and then put your hands on the floor and push yourself up. Okay, one block under each foot, lay back down on your back. Good, take your arms overhead again. Anchor your heels down, push your blocks down. So heels down and back. Again, send the knees to the toes, past the toes, away from the hands. Lift the thighs. Keep trying to find that opening in the front of the thigh, the front of the hip. Good, maybe even press the ball of the foot down, lift the heels, but lift the thighs, lift those thighs. And then lower the heels, keep lifting the thighs, and then slowly roll the spine down. Good, blocks closer if you need to, or if you can. 
Good. One more time. Heels down. Pull them back towards the shoulders. Knees away from the face. Good. Lift the heels. Lift the thighs. Lift the front of the hip. Lift the back of the hip. And then slowly lower the heels down. Keep lifting the pelvis up. Thighs up. And then slowly lower down. Okay, good. All right, so just a couple of these. So one block, right block on top of your left block. So you have two blocks under your left foot. Actually, let me do it the other way. So under your right foot, just so you can see. Press into both feet and lift the hips up, right? So the hips are lifting evenly, even though the legs are doing different things. And just for a moment, put a little more weight in the right foot and then put a little more weight in the left foot. And then slowly lower down. Good. Press into both feet evenly. Again, even though they're doing different things. Just feel the initiation similar. Keep the hips up. Take that left leg out. So left leg's pointed towards the ceiling, our left toes are pointed towards the ceiling, but the hips are off the floor. And I'm just gonna lower the hips towards the floor. Left leg is still up, and then lift the hips back up. Good, let's lower the left leg towards the floor. Hips are still up, and left leg up. And then lower that right, or lower the hips down. Good, other side. So, both blocks under that left foot. Good, press them to both feet, lift the hips up. So your hands and your peripheral vision is just watching the front of the pelvis. And ideally the knees aren't kind of whacking out towards the side of the room. They're a little more parallel, so there's weight in the inner feet. Step into that left heel, lift the left hip or engage the left leg a little more. And then press into that right foot and engage the right side, just so you're aware of what side is working harder. My right side is working harder no matter what. And then slowly lower down. See if you can initiate both sides, both feet press knees reach away from the eyes, both hamstrings engage, both sides of the lift, the hips lift evenly. Good, keep the hips up, keep the knees somewhat parallel, right leg up. Good, I'm just gonna slowly lower the hips down, but the right leg stays up. And then slowly roll the hips back up. Good, lower the right leg down, keep the hips up towards the floor, straight right leg towards the floor and back up and slowly lower the hips down. Good, just block between both feet, hug the block for a moment. Good, and release, okay. Last prep, and then we'll do a, and we'll do a back bend. Okay, so hands on the block. We'll do a couple preps. I think we did these. I think we did these last week. But but by your blocks, let's start with the fingers. So hands shoulder distance or block shoulder distance apart. Hands shoulder distance apart. And let's do one with the fingers facing forward. Right, you can bend your elbows and pull the elbows back and pull the ribs forward, right, just to open that front chest, front shoulder. Good, pin the heels down, pull the heels back, knees forward, thighs up, hips up. Arms are still pulling back, knees pulling forward. 
and lower down. Good. Let's turn the hands out to the side now, right? Just a different rotation in the arms. Good. Plant the hands down. Heels down, pull the heels back, knees forward, thighs up, hips up. Arms are still pulling back. Knees forward. Neck can be long, eyes can be forward, whatever works for your neck. If you can let your head fall back and stretch those front neck, neck muscles, yay. If not, that's okay. Hips down. Good, one more. Let's turn the hands now so they're pointing back, right? Fingers pointing back. Just getting all the hand variation. All right, so bend the elbows, pull the elbows back. Good, plant the heels down, knees forward, thighs up, hips up. Good, keep spreading the hands down, outer hand, inner hand, ball of hand, finger pads, inner feet down. And then slowly come down. Okay, yep, arms forward. <laughs> Good, so just making little fists and pull the fist down and then just kind of move the fist side to side. And then pick up the fist. So your the palm of your fist is facing forward and then same thing, just move the fist side to side. Forms pretty neutral. And then maybe palms up, palms down, then shake it out. Okay. A couple more. Right, again, we're probably just going to do one or two on each side. So I'm going to take my hand either towards the side wall or towards the back wall or maybe somewhere in the middle. Again, we did this last time. So left elbow on the inside of this left knee. So I'm going to pull the heels down again, send the knees forward, hips up. And there's a rotation. So I'm turning to look at that right hand, push into that right arm and reach that left arm up. Right, think about your triangle pose, it's a little backwards. Good. And then maybe look up at your left hand. And then maybe take that left arm back towards the wall behind you as the hips go higher, maybe. And then down. Good, other side. So again, find the hand position that'll allow that left arm to be part of your strong anchor. So either out to the side or back, or you can have it forward, but that's a big, that's a big rotation. So right arm inside, plant the heels, right? Think about back bends as initiating from the legs, heels down, knees forward, hips up, right arm up, turn, look at your left hand, Hips higher, left foot down, left hip up. And then look up at your right hand. Right hip up. And then maybe take that right arm overhead. Follow it with your eyes. And then down. Yay. Okay, so let's try. Do we do feet on blocks? No, but let's try hips on blocks. So we're just gonna play with a couple different ways to come up into a wheel or towards a wheel. All right, so I'm gonna take a block and I think that we should be ready for the middle height. Well, I actually have two blocks handy. Let's see how we do. So. Push into your heels, lift your hips. Now lift your heels, lift your hips and get one block under your pelvis, maybe on the middle height. So there's a little height under your pelvis and then drop those heels back down. Good, and we're just gonna mark this out. So now bring your hands 
right? Your fingers are pointed, again, not towards the feet, but slightly out to the side, right? Which brings the elbows in. Sometimes when the fingers are pointed towards the toes, the elbows pop out to the side of the room. So fingers turned out slightly, so the elbows come in. Again, we're just gonna mark this. So walk the feet slightly back to the block. So your heels are light, but they're still on the floor. I'm just gonna engage the heels down for a moment just to feel the legs strengthen. And then lift the heels, lift the hips. Pull the knees towards the opposite wall. And I'm just gonna put a little weight into my hands and roll up onto the top of my head. Look at the back wall, lift the hips, lift the hips, lift the hips and then slowly roll down, heels down. Okay. All right, so walk the feet close to the block. Again, heels heavy for a moment, push the heels down just to feel the legs and turn on. And then lift the heels, go ahead and lift them lift the thighs, lift the hips. And I'm gonna try to turn the first block down so it's on the lowest height and take the second block on the lowest height on top of the first block. So I have two blocks under my pelvis, even though they're low. If it doesn't feel right, then go back to the first block turn on its middle height. Good. Just take a moment here. Let's go ahead and straighten the legs just to give the, the hamstrings a little break. Right, straighten the right leg, right heel on the floor. If it feels okay, straighten the left leg, put the left heel on the floor as well or switch. Good. And then bend both knees, both feet on the floor. Let's put the hands in place again. So hands by your ears, fingers facing slightly out. So your arms are more parallel. There's a teeny tiny posterior tilt in the pelvis, teeny tiny, right? Sending the sitting bones up into the backs of the thighs. Good, walk the feet in a little. Anchor the heels just to feel the hamstrings turn on. Good, keep, keep those hamstrings on. Lift the heels up, push into the balls of the feet strongly. Lift the backs of the hips. And then again, push into your hands and maybe roll up onto the top of the head. Hips high up. And if you wanna come all the way up, go ahead. Push into your hands, push into your feet. and then slowly lower all the way down onto your blocks. We'll try it one more time. Right, so the key is the pelvis, the legs. The legs pull the pelvis up, the hands follow. Right, so the hands push the shoulders up, but the shoulders are following the pelvis. In this way, in this way of coming up. Okay, again, maybe just take right leg up towards the ceiling, bend and straighten a couple times. Point to straighten, flex to bend, point, flex, one more. Right foot on the floor, left leg up, point to straighten, flex to bend, point and straighten. Point, straight, it's at that opposite. Good thing you guys know, <laughs> hopefully, what I'm talking about. Okay, again, slight posterior tilt. Let's try last time. Hands by your head. Good. Even just feel as you press into your hand, you can peel the elbows up towards the ceiling and shoulder blades off of the floor. And then bring the shoulders back down. 
Good, walk the feet closer to the block. Press the heels down, just feel the backs of the legs engage. Just easier to lift through the legs and try to throw the spine up. Good, plant the heels, lift the thighs. Lift the heels to lift the thighs even more. Even if you need to walk the feet closer in, push into the balls of the feet, lift the thighs, push into the hands, lift the shoulders, come onto the top of the head, maybe all the way up. And then slowly back down. Yay. Push into your feet. Again, you can lift the heels slightly. Just slide one block out. And then slowly roll the spine down. Rest. Again, let your ribs drop, your belly settle, your lower back settle. The breath deepens, softening, right? So finding your sitting bones with your breath. So as you soften your pelvic floor, you also feel your, your psoas and the muscles that run along the spine all the way down, even along the length of the sacrum. Again, slight posterior tilt as you anchor your feet. Roll the spine up, slide the second block out, and slowly, slowly, segmentally roll the spine down. Again, let your breath help all those layers negotiate, lower back, so as belly. All right, back bends are just the, the shapes we don't often do during the day. Okay, so let's come back to where we started. Let's take that block behind the right thigh. Good, pressing that thigh, right thigh into the block. Arms are straight. And again, we're just gonna point the toes and try to straighten that right leg. Think more about the thigh meeting the block and that right sitting bone moving towards the block, towards the floor, towards the left foot. And then and straighten. Good, and bend and right foot on the floor. Pause. Good, take the block behind the left thigh and just pressing into the block. Good, and point to straighten the leg. And again, thinking about length, again, not so much force, but a, a soft, clear sense of length through the, especially that left side of the torso, from the left sitting bone to the crown of the head, right? Which is being created by the movement of the left thigh into the block. Bend and straighten. One more time, bend and straighten. Good, and both feet on the floor. Just taking that block now, this, the skinniest way between your thighs and you're just gonna gently hug the block. It doesn't have to be a lot of effort. Think less, less is more. And then as you relax your effort, let the pelvis sink back, the inner thigh soften. You're still aware of the block between the legs, but you're just trying to let everything fall into or be drawn back by gravity. And then again, gently hug the block 
both sides initiating same time. And engaging those inner legs, a little bit of the pelvic floor. And then as you relax, letting the hips drop. The legs get heavy, the pelvis get heavy. Again, the muscles on either side of the spine get quiet. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold the block in my hands for a moment, but take my knees up one at a time. Good, and then block between the thighs, arms out to the side. So again, the block is being held by the thighs. And I'm just gonna gently take the legs up and over to the right, nice and slow, and let them rest on the floor. Right hand can come to that left knee. Maybe the eyes turn and look to the left. So a little movement in the head, right? Maybe bring the head to neutral so your eyes are looking up at the ceiling. And then just for a moment, let the eyes look to the right without turning the head. And then the eyes follow. Slight turn to the right. And then let the eyes look left when you're at your right. See if you can soften the throat and the back of the neck, let the eyes initiate and then let the head follow the eyes. Keep softening throat, neck, face. Good, release the legs with that left right hand very slowly. And if you can do this one leg at a time, if this feels too strong, but hug the block, come back up to center and slowly over to the other side. Again, let the legs rest, left hand on that right thigh. Maybe turn and look at the right hand, just feeling the what happens in the neck, how much turns on, right? From looking down at screens or from kind of forward head posture because of computers, the front neck has, got, has gotten very tight in many people as well as the back. And then bring the head to center. Again, let the eyes drift to the left, head stays where it is and then let the head follow slowly. So the bigger muscles of the neck stay quiet. Good. And then keeping your head there, let your eyes look back over towards that right hand, quietly, gently, and then let the head follow. Separate the teeth, let the lower jaw hang away from the upper jaw. Good. And then bring the head back to center. Arms are heavy on the floor. Hug the block quietly, slowly bring the knees back up to center and then both feet on the floor. Okay, so roll to your side and come up. So we'll just stay on the floor. So I'm just grabbing a blanket. We've done this one before, but I'm just gonna use the blanket to tip the edge of the block up, right? So one edge of the block is on the floor, one of the edge, one edge of the block is on the blanket. And there's a little distance between the blocks. Um, 
in case you have, right, some of us have a little bit more of a bony prominence in the center of the sacrum. All right, so we're just supporting the, the lateral part of the sacrum. And so I'm just gonna plant my heels, lift my hips, and I'm gonna put my, I want my tailbone off the back end towards the feet, but I'm gonna lay the, the length of the sacrum down on the blocks and slowly lower the ribs to the floor. Good, and even when you're down, you can kind of pin or hold the blocks or hold the sticky mat and lift your ribs just slightly up and away from your pelvis, just to traction your lower back. So it's almost like your lower back is laying in a, a sling. Right, sacrum is supported. Ribs are supported. Feet are on the floor. So arms can be away from the body or your hands can be on the body, whatever feels more kind of widening to the back body. Palms can even be down, elbows bent, right? Just so the back body lays, just sinks, settles towards the floor. And again, the breath. Ideally finding pubis, sitting bones, tailbone, really letting the inner inseams of the legs, pelvic floor soften. Right, because they give permission to the outer hips, front hip, back hip to also soften. And then as your breathe continues to kind of drop into the pelvis, just keep letting the whole kind of perimeter circumference inside of pelvis, outside of pelvis settle. And as the pelvis relaxes, feel the spine settle. The belly, diaphragm, breath. Like the breath shifting as the diaphragm finds its rhythm, a quieter rhythm. And just keep relaxing whatever you can find, back of neck, shoulders, hands, face. Again, notice when the jaw starts engaging again. And sometimes it's when the mind starts thinking again. And so going back to watching the breath. Again, because the breath is so linked to the nervous system, And we really are very sense oriented and emotion oriented. But using the breath to take us kind of out of emotional kind of looping or mental looping, that repetition. It doesn't evolve or resolve. See if you can just follow the breath. Find a different avenue. Just soothing and settling. Good. If you want to take your feet together, knees apart, you can. Again, if that 
engages the belly, the psoas, or the back. And you can just do it for a moment or not do it at all. Then keeping the breath fluid and long just to allow the psoas front hip to soften. And then knees back together. And again, anchoring the feet and just lifting the hips enough to push the blocks towards the feet. And so you can let your legs rest on the blocks if you want to push the blocks off to the side and roll up the mat and put the mat under the thighs, you can. And you're gonna put the blocks on the belly or the blanket on the belly. And the hands on the belly. Again, we have lots of nerve tissue in our hands and in our belly. Staying with that slightly lengthened breath just to kind of help move the creative rhythm for the body. Slight undulation, a slight buoyancy. And in this place, find what is good. Find what feels nourishing, whether it's in your being, whether it's your breath, whether it's something outside of you, maybe it's just the feel of gravitation on your body, gravity, right, that pull towards the earth, or the sound of your breath. or beauty, art, music, the sound of the ocean. And what nourishes you? and let yourself be nourished. Just in a sense saying yes, receiving. And just the last few kind of moments, almost a sense of whatever isn't yours to carry or hold. That doesn't belong to you. Just gently let it be carried back, almost like those fall leaves dropping to the ground with the breeze, carried back to where they belong. No need to understand.
And then any piece of you that has been displaced, fragmented, just entangled elsewhere, just gently, gently, again, kindly with love and care. Clean and clear, just gently returned back to you, right? As if calling yourself home. And any last sense of nourishment, light, color, nature. Sense of your breath, fingers, toes. Moving your limbs. And gently roll to your side. And back up to sit. Find your seat. Right in your body, in your breath, in your focus, in your intention. Palms together in front of your heart. Any kindness or offering wherever it is needed. And after your next exhale, let's inhale for one ohm. Boy, that's as close to a back bend as 